Hi guys, and welcome to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. What you've just heard is one of the best metal cassettes around, the TDK MAR. At least the, the, the chassis is one of the best, absolutely the best. This cannot warp in no way. On a Nakamichi Dragon, fully functional and just been serviced from a, a renowned German lab. So, obviously that's the best of the best. Your own recording, sourced from a good LP, directly recorded on a metal cassette, a Type 4 cassette on an Akamich Dragon. Well, I bet that's an audio file grade, a hi-fi or high-fidelity reproduction. But today we're going to explore also something else. Uh, we're going to try to understand, I'm going to try to give you a few tips on pre-recorded cassettes, those hi-fi audiophile grade cassettes, which deserve some attention, I think, and um, get close to what is a homemade recording, which obviously is always gonna be the best. Let's take a look. Okay, so now we can finally start to take a look at the labels, the audiophile labels, or simply hi-fi labels, high fidelity of the sound signal recorded on specific tapes, um, but also some processes adopted to obtain uh, good quality recordings, uh, especially dedicated to compact cassette tapes. So let's just start off with something like this, very simple. Now this is a jazz album. And always keep your eyes out for uh, jazz albums, if you like jazz, obviously, because the recording is usually a little better than um, those of pop and rock, for example. Obviously, the same you can be said for uh, classical recordings. So always keep, your, um, keep, uh, keep in mind that this typology of recordings is usually better. But let's see why I, take the, I took this tape out. As you can see here, it says chrome, which means, it should mean, that the tape adopted here has a, a chromium dioxide typology of compound on the film of the cassette of the tape. Um, uh, in most cases, you're not going to have a type 2, that's a chromium dioxide tape, simply because, as you can see, the little notches here are all the way on the sides. So this is a type 1 cassette, physically speaking. But um, there, there probably is some uh, chromium dioxide on the film in order to have a better frequency response. Why is this? Because actually, in not all, not all recordings obviously, but in, in decent or good quality recordings, we try, they try to use the, the, the mass production. They try to use this typology of, of a combination. They did not want you to use a different bias as a type 2 tape would re require, uh, um, a higher bias, for example, a, a 70 microsecond typology, because uh, a lot of uh, tape decks or um, simply the setting of that was not, was not easy. I mean, if you were not, uh, if you did not have a professional tape deck or a good quality tape deck and you do not know what you're doing, like a just casual consumer, you do not, you did not probably know or did not pay attention to set properly cassette, to type two cassettes, or even type four, for example. So that's why they tried to put something inside in the composition, 
but in the end it's a type 1 cassette and that's a typical approach for a lot of recordings as we will see. I'll show you another example like for example this best of Earth, Wind and Fire which is a normal pop um, typology of, of, uh, of music. Here there's a nice little label that says chrome tape. Uh, there's also the Nolby, Dolby B noise reduction and this is the same philosophy. I think this is even an older cassette and again this is a tape 1 cassette which probably has some chromium dioxide compound inside in order to have a better uh, a better sound overall. Um, talking about Dolby B and C I just I'll, I'll probably do a tape uh, a tape. Uh, I'll probably do a video in the in the, in the following uh, in the future, uh, considering focusing on this typologies of noise reduction technology. I just wanted to say two words. Um, if you find and you're mostly going to do find Dolby B or C on tapes, um, you might as well always try to hear if pushing the little button that you have in your tape deck, if you have it obviously, um, if the quality is increased, if the noise reduction is properly um, uh, applied, Because unfortunately, if sometimes when you insert the Dolby C, B or C, there is um, a, a very strong compression or cutoff of the higher frequencies, which obviously are dedicated to the tape hiss. But in some, time, in some cases, unfortunately, they're also cutting off some good frequencies of the tape. This also means that it was adopted during the recording. That is why you should be pushing the button to decode the properly the signal. But as I said, sometimes it's better just to leave it off. Only in very good occasions, in specific occasions, the Dolby is, uh, is a high quality and it's good to press it and the, the tape hiss will great and the, the, the general noise will, will greatly lower at that point. So always test. There is not a general rule, rule in that sense. Um, here, another example. Uh, best of Dire Straits. Chromium dioxide, as you can see. Dolby, again. So this was kind of a standard procedure with, um, as you can see here, this is a good example. It says chromium dioxide. I think you can see it, but it says 120 microseconds, which is uh, a lower bias. It's not the true 70 microsecond bias used adopted in a true type two or type four cassette. That's it. Okay, let's proceed. Um, another another interesting uh, typology of procedure for cassettes um, was this XDR. Um, here I have two examples, two nice examples. They, they both have XDR. Um, and what what is XDR? XDR is an ex it means extended dynamic range, and it's supposed to give a higher, better frequency response uh, during the uh, recording of these, meaning a higher also a uh, dynamic range. A higher sound pressure level. Um, in some cases, it does have. A, you, there are some positive effects on these recordings. In others, no, there isn't this aspect. Um, something. See here, you can see extended or expanded dynamic range. Um, something interesting to know is that unfortunately, um, the XDR mainly of Capitol Records which was, I think, those who had introduced it, um, have a very bad issue regarding lubricants, lubrification of the tape. I will do a special video on this in the future, but I just wanted to tell you that, unfortunately, a lot of these XDR tapes suffer from this issue. Uh, the, the lubricant um, completely um, vanished, went away, dried off, dried out, so uh, in most cases you're going to find some issues in playing these. Wow and Flutter are going to be terrible. 
uh, the, 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 the tape is going to start to, to slow down and just stop sometimes, unfortunately. The, 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 the tape is so dry. So keep in mind this. Always try to test them if you can or just take bear in mind that you're going to have this issue with XDR in most cases. Um, but there is a solution. You can lubricate them. You can add some oil. But I will, I will, I will show you a tutorial of this in the future. Okay, let's go ahead. Well, let's start to see some um, some labels. Um, maybe you're familiar with this, Telark. This is an excellent label. They also do excellent recordings for CDs. They're still active. And as you can see, um, this is a digital recording. Yes, unfortunately, a lot of these late uh, tapes were recorded in digital and then transferred to analog on tape which apparently gives a little more clarity, but obviously we're, we're going away from what, what, it, what is an AAA, a, a completely digital domain uh, recording, which I think is not positive in the end. Um, here we can find something interesting, which was also present here, which is, I think you can see it, HX Pro, besides the Dolby B noise reduction, which is also present here. HX Pro. What is HX, HX Pro? Um, this was actually a technology developed by Bang & Olufsen, but then rapidly acquired, immediately acquired, I would say, by um, Dolby Laboratories, which, in, uh, which started to introduce this in his cassettes, in high-quality cassettes. Uh, what is HX Pro? It's, it's um, a recording process where, um, it, just in simple terms, it practically regulates the bias. It optimizes the bias. Because sometimes, um, especially in the higher frequencies, if you have a constant bias during recording, you might have some issues in the higher frequencies. Instead, if you're recording with this technology, the bias regulates itself with the optimum output. So um, it's always good to, uh, if, if you have an H HX Pro cassette, that, that's always going to be a good thing. If you have HX Pro on your tape deck, that, that is not for playback. That is for recording. If you're going to record something on your cassettes, that's going to have an HX Pro uh, value. Um, let's, let's proceed. Let's, say, let's take a look at other um, interesting labels, like this, this cassette, the, st the Strayway Child of Song of the Wood. Um, this is, these are very small labels with that issued though important recordings, very high quality recordings, which I highly suggest. This doesn't have any special process, it's just a good quality cassette, which I wanted to share with you. So this is certainly um, one, one typology. These are all cassettes that I, I as you will see, um, very um, uh, I just snatched them from the, uh, the Nakamichi um, catalog, as you would say, since that's an excellent source of information for high quality recordings, recordings regardless if they're under Nakamichi or not. But we will, we will go back to that. We'll take a look afterwards to that. Let's proceed. Another excellent um, brand label is this one. I think you can see it. It's Cafe Records. Um, for example, this is an excellent album, although it's live, so maybe it's not the best of the best, but it's, it's a good recording. Um, as you can see, it looks a little bit like um, uh, Malfi, Mobile Fidelity. That's because in a lot of cases, there was a collaboration. The recording process could have been done at, uh, at Malfi, for example. So um, this, in fact, was obtained by the original master tapes directly sent to the cassettes, which is why it's a high fidelity cassette. Um, as you can see here, the little logo, it says BASF, the BASF. That means that they employed high, very high quality tape to do this, that you're not going to find this usually. So um, if they're telling you what kind of tape they use, that means it's a really, a very good quality tape. As you can see here, the equalization is 70 microseconds, which is a high bias. And in fact, it's a true type two cassette. Now, um, high quality cassettes, hi-fi, audiophile cassettes, true uh, audiophile cassettes are almost all gonna be chromium dioxide uh, type two cassettes or in very rare cases, type four. 
metal cassettes. So this is already going to be a superior experience than those we've seen up until now, because this is a true type two cassette in the composition and also, as you can see, physically and in the bias. So let's proceed. Um, talking about Mophie, this um, is one of their, the vast catalog they produced of uh, high quality cassettes made by Mofi. Um, this one in particular is not so good. I don't know why. I think this cassette itself has a, a lubricant problem, a lubricant issue. Oh, I don't know what happened. It's not that good, but I'm sure the other Mofi cassettes, I heard them at, at um, other friends' houses. So they're, they're excellent. But um, I just wanted to say maybe this this edition wasn't wasn't that good. I don't know. But in any case, this typology of cassettes made by Mofi, by Mobile Fidelity, are excellent. Um, they, they're highly regarded. They cost a lot if you go to on eBay or in other places. And obviously, these are completely sourced by um, uh, the master tapes. And they're dubbed at lower speed, not high speed, which also gives high quality. As you can see, this again is a, a chromium dioxide tape. Let's see if they're... There's some indication here about this. Obviously, you're going to have some indications on the recording processes here. Um, but no, I don't see any indications on the bias. Strange enough. But it is a Type 2 cassette, as you can see. And I'm pretty sure this is chromium dioxide, as the, the one we've just seen before of Cafe Records, which I'm sure they have been curating it. Um, last but not least, I wanted to show you one of the best sounding albums I discovered. This, this is um, a record of Sheffield Lab. They also in uh, there are also in the Nakamichi catalog, um, and I highly suggest to go and buy these. Uh, there are a few on Discogs. Go for it. They're not going to be there for for a long time. I just paid a few dollars for this. And the, the sound quality is amazing, I must say. This was performed live and directly recorded to the two-track master tape. Then was immediately dubbed to create the uh, tape, the cassette tapes. As you can see, this is clearly stated. It's a Type 2 cassette with a 70 microsecond bias. Also, it has HX Pro and Dolby B. Um, so um, the Sheffield Lab cassettes are incredible. Um, I also heard other other uh, albums they all sound great this is a fantastic album uh, out of the 70s very funky which i highly recommend and that's about it okay so um before closing the video i wanted to take a look to a few other labels and more specifically a few other uh recordings that were were released in the past decades which i think are very interesting and are worth exploring because the quality is very very high but as i mentioned before let's take a look at the nakamichi reference recording series because um in the past century these were the reference cassettes pre-recorded cassettes um this is a a brochure where you can see some indications on the recording on the different labels to create this reference series um, as you can see here, for example, this is the cassette we just saw of Sheffield Lab. So what I'm trying to say is take a look at these images, at these albums, um, and take notes. Because I think you can also buy, find these cassettes and um, buy them as their original release. You don't have to go with the reference Nakamichi. If you're lucky and you're paying just a few bucks or whatever, go for it. I mean, but it's very, very difficult to find these golden little cassettes and they're extremely expensive, unfortunately. Um, there's there's one a test cassette now online and um, it goes for uh, hundreds of, of euros, hundreds of dollars. So as I was saying, Sheffield Lab is one of the best, best labels, I think, in my opinion. But let's go ahead. As we can see, Telerk, uh, we, we saw a, a cassette by Telerk before. These are a few recordings they, uh, they suggest and that have been transposed in the uh, Nakamichi reference recording series. Um, Delos is also another great um, label. As you can see, mainly classical music. If you're interested in that typology, 
go for it. As I said, try to find the original recordings without passing by the reference, although obviously the reference recordings are going to be the top. Also because in almost all, or maybe all, I'm not sure, they're using uh, metal cassettes, metal tape cassettes. So obviously the sound is going to be incredible. Um, here more Delos. GRP, only three recordings. We're going to see another brochure with other suggestions. Here are a few notes on the different um, uh, recording companies. Here you can see the price. Uh, I think this was issued in the 80s, so um, $18 at the at in those that days weren't obviously uh, the $18 of today. I mean that that was a high price. So let's take a look to the other um, brochure I had in mind here over here. See this is the Sound on Nakamichi reference cassette which has a little bit of everything inside. Um, here's the same picture of before. This is black and white. I found it online. And here all, and you can see other labels, interesting labels like Wyndham Hill. Here again we have we have other typology of music, a little more new age I would say with a touch of 80s. Again GRP. Here we have a few more uh, recordings in the Nakamichi reference series. Again, Telark, lots of uh, lots of tracks on the reference cassette. Um, I know there's one now on eBay for 140 euro, I think, and that's only just the best of of the of a mix of all these reference recordings. It's insane, unfortunately. If you think you can make your own, it would sound even better. But it's also a, a matter of collection of collecting this this uh, memorabilia. Here you can see also A&M. Also their normal cassettes are excellent. A lot of chrome cassettes have been issued by A&M. So you can see also some jazz. So as you can see, I mean, there are a lot of, of other records, labels, like Spindle Top Records, which have issued a lot of excellent recordings which you can find on cassette, like this is from Vibes, uh, again, Delos, etc., etc the Sheffield lab okay so just to, to conclude I wanted to show you I found a few examples on eBay like this tape um, by Nautilus uh, this is a limited edition as you can see audio file reference by John Clemmer straight from the heart and uh, this recording I, I, got, I have the screenshot over here went for five hundred dollars on eBay something very similar this is Elton John but it's again a Nautilus recording audio file typology just to let you know what's happening unfortunately so again try to find these recordings and I think you would uh, save some money and find excellent products as you can see here in, the, in, in this case here this is this uh, they employed a Maxell cassette which comes from directly from the original two-track master uh, it's fun to see that there's a warning actually on on the side of the cassette regarding the dynamic range since uh, as I said I mean people are used to bad quality cassettes so um, when you buy something like this you're obvi obviously going to have a low end at low end frequencies but also very important and high extended dynamic range in the higher frequencies which I mean not always as you can see here are, uh, can your, your your system can deal with if you're not if you're not um, used to it, especially in the past. So um, just to show you one other example of Nautilus here, this is the audio sampler. Uh, I saw you can find these uh, around for incredible prices, and here you can clearly see that uh, the Nakamichi used to use the metal metal typologies, as you can see. Also, the bias is reported here, seven, 70 microseconds. So, good stuff guys, expensive, but I think if you can find some cassettes, some recordings belonging to these labels, you will highly enjoy them at the same way. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel, leave your comments here below, leave your suggestions for audiophile, hi-fi, pre-recorded cassettes. Please, I'm very interested in that, and I think so also the cassette culture community and the vinyl community, because we're all going towards tape. Thank you guys, see you soon, bye!